I'm Jennifer Tryon, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about one of my favorite non-traditional quilt blocks, and that's the orange peel. And cutting the orange peel is made all the easier by using these thin metal dies. They come nested in all of these sizes, and scrapbookers and card makers will already be familiar with dies, but we're going to cut the fabric and the stabilizer with these dies. So for this project, I decided to use orange, lots of different variations of orange, just to really highlight the orange peel look. And by the end of it, it's going to look very fresh and very juicy on a white backdrop. You're also going to need iron-on stabilizer, some thin, thin, sewable iron-on stabilizer. And every orange peel is going to get a stabilizer for the back. And we're gonna cut both out with the dies. So, choose your size. I've chosen the six inch orange peel, and that's gonna coordinate with the four and a half inch square from my Build-A-Block set. If you're wondering how six equals four and a half, this is how the orange peel is going to be placed onto your square. So let's get cutting these out. Remember, you've gotta cut out your fabric and your stabilizer with your orange peel, and then you need to cut out your background fabric with your square. To get the most out of my fabric, I fold it lengthwise, and then lengthwise again, and then down. But feel free, play around with your fabric and find out exactly how you can fit as many pieces on one sheet. And to cut it out, I'm gonna start with my clear cutting plate, then my metal shim, then my fabric, die with the edge side down, then my plastic shim, and then my clear cutting plate. And then just run it through the machine. The machine is gonna to totally take care of cutting it. No cranking, no having to measure, no having to get a rotary cutter around a curve on a ruler. The machine's gonna take care of all of it. And presto, eight clean orange peels. That was fast. Let's do another eight. And I'm gonna keep cutting all of my orange peels out of all of my variations of orange fabric. It's exactly the same process for the stabilizer. Remember, you need a piece of iron-on stabilizer for every single one of your orange peels that you cut. Now normally I would say go ahead and iron on your stabilizer before you're cutting so that it saves a step. However, in this case, we don't want anything ironed on until after we've sewn the stabilizer to the peel. Every orange peel also needs a white square. And it's exactly the same process again. Don't forget to flip and rotate your plates. It'll just make them last longer. An easy eight squares. Just keep going. Okay, so once you've got everything cut out, all of your stabilizer, all of your squares, and all of your orange peels, set the white squares aside because now it's time to assemble our peels with the stabilizer. So we're gonna take one of our peels and with the shiny side down, you're gonna line up your orange peels and you're gonna sew all the way around one quarter inch. You're gonna sew the stabilizer directly to the front of your orange peel. Now this might sound wrong, but it's not. Trust me, you'll see. So I'm using the Gemini stitch and I'm just sewing one quarter inch all the way around my orange peel. When I get to the point, I'm gonna leave my needle down, pivot. And now I've sewn all the way around my orange peel. So now I'm gonna take my little scissors, grab the top of the stabilizer, and just open it up. I've found it's the easiest way to now turn this right side out. Remember, the iron-on adhesive is on the inside. I'm gonna trim the edges so I can get a, a nice pointed corner and have less bulk. And then I'm gonna turn this right side out. Because this is gonna go on the back of the orange peel, no one will know that it was ever cut. So you can use your finger, or maybe even a pencil, even the screwdriver that comes with your machine to get your tips nice and pointed. And now, flatten back out where you cut open, and now the adhesive will be showing. You're not gonna have any seam on the edge. It's gonna be ready for quilting. And you're just gonna press with a hot iron right on like that. And you're gonna do this for every single one. So once you've got all of your orange peels ironed onto your background squares, now it's time to start just basic straight seam sewing. I'm gonna line up my orange peels, right sides together, making sure my ends are straight, and I'm just gonna run a straight quarter inch seam straight down the edge. Easy. And I'm gonna 
chain piece. I'm gonna do this for all of them, sewing them together two by two. And when I'm done, I'm gonna be left with lots of twos ready to be sewn into fours. But first, I need to press them open. Remember to nest your seams, which means you wanna press one seam this way and one seam that way. That way you can nest your seams together and everything will sew up so much nicer. And just sew a quarter inch right down the line. If for whatever reason you didn't iron your orange peel directly into the center, just adjust your seam a little bit. Don't run over it. And now we've got our block of four. And I'm just gonna keep building blocks of four. I find it helpful to chain piece these one after the next. When you've gotten through your whole pile, make sure you press open all of your seams. So now we can really start to see why this is called the orange peel. You can see the circles starting to take shape. It'll be even more prominent once the seams are together. And then we just keep building. So now I've got it all basted and trimmed along the sides. So I'm ready to do the quilting. Well, the appliqueing in this case. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sew a seam around all of the ironed on orange peels. That's going to do a couple of things. One, ensure that they never come off. And two, it's going to contribute to the overall look of the orange peel. It's also going to give us a nice orange peel pattern on the back of our fabric. Don't be afraid to move your work around. It's not gonna hurt it. Remember when you get to the point, you can turn the wheel towards you until the needle is down, lift the presser foot up, and pivot. And don't be afraid to roll up your whole quilt and get it inside the throat space. There's plenty of room. And I am backstitching on the end there. Oftentimes in quilting, you don't need to backstitch, but because I'm applicating this on, I wanna make sure it stays. Doesn't it look so fresh and beautiful? Once you get them all sewn down, you can start taking out your basting pins and you can finish quilting it however you like. You can either stitch in the ditch, down the seams, or even echo out a little pattern using the Gemini quilting rulers. That would be fun. However you decide to quilt it, you know that your orange peel is gonna be uniform and perfect every time because you use the Gemini dies. I just love this one.